Novotny's or Novotny's condition? N-O-V-O-T-N-Y. I see. Um, yeah, will you ring his room, please? Is Joe Novak there? It's his wife. <clears throat> oh. I see. Well, all right. Tell him I called. Thank you. Morning, sweetheart. Oh, morning, Daddy. Any news? No, sir, nothing new. Tizo's listed as in critical condition. I can't get through to Joe. I assume he's with him somewhere. You stay up all night. No. Your dog's been walked, though. Well, at this hour? Before this hour. Yeah, it's more like before dawn. They were coming back when I was getting up to go to Mass. You were supposed to sleep late, my pet. Has, uh, has Joe called on? Look, I slept plenty. It's your daughter who didn't get a wink of sleep. Now, young lady, when I turned in at 2 a.m., you promised me you'd finish your tea Jack and, and go to bed. Jack and I talking. Now, you'll take a nap later on today, dear. You should be a little careful. Sit down, Finn. Sit down. I've been I know. such a pest. Sweetheart, it's just that I am not crazy about you walking the streets at the first crack of dawn, even with Finn for company. Lie down. Nobody. It, it, they take him for a tough guy. A mugger sees him and they run the other way. It's not muggers I'm thinking about. Well. We've all agreed a thousand times that wives and children aren't the targets here. As long as they're out of the line of fire, Tizo's over in the hospital, I'm over here, I'm safe out of the line of fire. I doubt anybody's gonna try and get to him in his hospital bed. Then why did Joe ask you to leave the hospital? All right, now, just let's stop. This is a new day, it'd probably be a long one. Let's just take things as they come, starting with breakfast, hmm? John? All right, all right, look, I'm, I'm sorry to stir things up, excuse me. You're perfectly safe, darling. You're home with us. Joe's men are watching you day and night, so... Not Joe's men, Daddy. Not Joe. Tizo is the one who has the army. The only men who work for Joe are fishermen. Well, I believe that. Joe knows what Tizo's up to. He doesn't admit it, but he knows. Okay, he keeps those secrets, but that's the end of his involvement. He's not part of any gang as leader or follower. He's on his own. Oh, let's go on downstairs and your father gets dressed. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that Joe's over there getting deathbed instructions from his uncle because he's the next in line. Well, he isn't. I have proof of that in addition to Joe's solemn word. He's over there right now because the man who loves him the most in his life is hurt and I'm letting them be together. Daddy. What specific proof do you mean? Joe agreed to go with me to Bermuda. At a time when Tizo's in all this trouble, he felt free to go. Have you considered the implications of that? Well, what I've been wondering this morning is whether that trip is still possible. Well, once Tizo's all right, of course. The minute he's all right, we'll take off. Do you need more proof? Now, let it lie, both of you, please. Yesterday, Joe and I had a long talk about moving to another state, leaving Tizo thousands of miles behind. Now, Joe, put it under consideration. Does that sound like the intentions of a New York crime lord? Moving. Away from fear and closed minds. Why not? Joey. Oh, are you all right? Is he all right? <laughs>
forget your key? No. Good morning. Thank you so much for escorting my daughter back from Florida. Goodbye. Ray, that attitude won't make things any easier. <laughs> Seduction usually isn't an easy matter, no way you look at it. Now, please leave. He stays. He told you last night we'd both be Kimberly, here. Kimberly, be both... quiet. Doctor, get out. You're very angry I got the message. Oh, really? Well, how perceptive of you, how intuitive. No wonder I went to you for advice on parenting. And no wonder she comes to you for emotional support. Wasn't that your phrase? Precious. He's a fraud. You do know that, don't you? A brilliant fraud, but a fraud. We came here, we came here to talk. I'm willing to try. If you're not, there's no point in hanging around. You live here, darling. You have to hang around, unless you'd rather go back to Topeka. Oh, come on. Now, come on. Now, hold it. Now, there's no need for this to degenerate into some kind of shouting match unless you force it. Now, we've traveled, and we're tired, and we're precious, but we can make some progress. Now, Kim certainly is willing. God knows we had enough ugliness last night. Oh, you think so? You'd like more? No. No, I wouldn't, but your friend here is going to get it. Unless he comes to his senses, in which case I will just continue to hate him privately and I won't be the first. But if he pursues my young daughter any further, then you would not believe the amount of ugliness with which I will surround you. You know, Ray, threats really don't help and they're not exactly appropriate. Oh, wonderful! Wonderful! Why don't you tell me about propriety? Or better yet, doctor. Why don't you give me a 20-minute lecture on tolerance and fortitude and exploiting other people's failures? Threats are very appropriate, unless they're empty, which mine are not. I promise you, I can and I will run you into the ground. Oh, wait, wait, wait. E exploiting other people's failures? What are you talking about? You. You. Taking advantage of the void that's in Kimberly's life, the fact that she doesn't have a father. I gave birth to her. I supported her, and I gave her my own mother to raise her, but I couldn't give her a father. I just could not beat that need. So what did I do? What insanity did I try? I'm going to provide her with a surrogate, the ideal older man who somehow miraculously seems to be willing to give the child time and attention. I am not a child, and Seneca has done anything but exploit me. He's loved me. Generously. You tear me down, he builds me back up. And somehow he gives me the magic I need to look in you in the eye and tell you what I think of you. Which is that you could understand me and Seneca if you wanted to. An older man and a younger woman shouldn't shock Mrs. William Woodard. This isn't about Seneca and me, it's about you and me. You have a daughter who's a grown woman. You look at me and you see yourself at 18. And that's where all your disgust comes from. You're wrong. And I'll explain why to you in private. You know something? You don't need me. Yes, I do. No, no, no. You do better on your own. I suspect that uh, you'll keep the barriers up until I'm out of earshot. I'll see you later. Please stay. No, no, no. I'm in the way. Well, at last, we're in agreement. And... You will not speak to her later. You will never be welcome in my home again. Stay away. Ray, listen to your daughter. She has some important lessons to teach you. All right. If you have anything to say for yourself, you say it now. I won't give him up. He's alive. More stable than he was, I think. Maybe, maybe not. They didn't operate. No, but uh, Roger says that uh, as soon as he's strong enough, surgery is required. They already worked on George, though. Uh, he's going to be fine. A bullet passed right through his body, just missed his kidney. Dear Lord. He was luckier than my uncle. Are you all right? Oh, yeah, sure. I'm fine. Have you eaten anything? Well, some people brought stuff, but I wasn't hungry. Oh, what people? What, why don't you put your feet up here? Relax. Joseph, we're so sorry. 
You know, Joe, anything we can do, you know that. Yeah, I know, thanks. Sean, this is so hard. Ooh, I wish I could be there with you. I wish you could, too. Well, can't Tizo have visitors? I wouldn't disturb him. Uh, no, his heart's weakened. Um, it would be better if you just wrote a note, and uh, I'll bring it over to him. He can read it. Um, he understands pretty well when he's conscious. He'll know that you're thinking about him. Can he talk, Joe? A little. He's, he's fuzzy. I guess that's the concussion. And he's so weak. Well, from loss of blood. Yes, and the shock and his heart. Man, his age getting shot twice. Well, the bullet uh, didn't penetrate his skull, but there were uh, bone splinters. The x-rays showed that. So it's not just a question of cleaning out the wounds. Uh, those splinters have to be removed. Will they tell you what his chances are? Yeah, 50-50 chance he'll make it through the surgery. Roger won't even talk about possible brain damage. I've seen Tizo a lot worse than that. Five years ago, I told you. My uncle's a small man, but um, he's some combination of muscle and willpower. Keeps him on his feet. You know, he's never sick. This one time, um, he had an accident, and uh, the doctor said that he'd never walk again, but he's showed me. He made up his mind that he just wasn't going to go under like that, and it worked. It'll work this time, too, Don. He's not going to die. <sighs> Joe, Roger is one of the best. He knows what he's doing. Tizo's in good hands. Yes, and our prayers are with him. I lit a candle, and I asked Father McShane to say Mass for him. Thank you. It's a good feeling, all this support. Got more family than you thought. Yeah. I only had Tizo for such a long time. I'm sorry. It kind of shakes me up. You don't have to be in charge now. Nobody expects that. Would you like to go in and lie down for a bit? No, I've got to get back to the hospital. Well, I'd like to go and sit in the nurse's station and around you while you're with Tizo. No, that's still not a good idea. Well, but there are people there who brought him food. They weren't in your position. They weren't, um... In danger. Well, Joe, what exactly is Siobhan's position? I'm sorry, but I have to know. All I have to say is, Tiza was cut down by men who had to be out of their minds. Given that, there's no safety around Tiza until those men are put away. They'll be dealt with quickly. The police have promised immediate arrests. Well, what about Siobhan in the meantime? In the meantime, I'm afraid I've made some promises I can't keep. Dr. Bolak seemed to feel that you had some words of wisdom for me. He was wrong on that score, too. I said I wouldn't give him up. I mean it. And you say you're not a child. Grow up, Kimberly. As my late husband used to say, come to the party. Your late husband, who is 20 years older than yourself? Whom I married. Married, dear, when I was 10 years older than you are, so there isn't any parallel. If he loved you and cared about you, yes, there's a parallel. <sighs> you see how much Seneca cares for me and how real it is. I know you do. Why don't you just admit it? All I can see is a male in a classic midlife crisis. What? Dr. Bolak is busy refreshing himself at the Fountain of Youth. Her name happens to be Kimberly Harris. When he's satisfied himself, he'll walk away without a backward glance. That's horrible. Oh, oh you better believe it is. I mean, you're horrible for thinking it. All right? All right, make me into the villain. You'll be in the minority, the exception that proves the rule. The rest of the public will go after your seducer. You wouldn't publish that. Try me. Mother, I finally have something that's important in my life that I've always wanted. Don't take it away from me. Him. You've always wanted a father. Now, what you've got right now is a tawdry little affair with an older man. 
It's a fling, a dime a dozen. It isn't worth all the emotional investment. I'm important to Seneca in a way that I have never been important to anybody. He doesn't feel guilty about me or burdened or obligated. And he doesn't, he's not out to score like the rest of my boyfriends were. Oh, his interest in you isn't sexual? It includes that and goes beyond that. He likes me as a person. He helps me stand on my own two feet and somehow protecting me at the same time. I feel wonderful with him, not cheap. Even your sarcastic little cracks can't make me feel cheap. Behind the sarcasm, there's a lot of rage, Kim. So stop defending him and give him up. No, I'm warning you. Send me back to Topeka. I'll just come back. Or try kicking me out of here. I'll find a way to live in New York. I'll stay in New York and I'll stay with Seneca. And I don't really believe you're going to publish that in your newspaper. You wouldn't do that to Ray Woodard's daughter. Darling, I can see to it that your identity is withheld completely. Then I crucify your friend. And he's very vulnerable, Kim. He's had trouble with the medical board. They've only recently restored his license to practice. I can and I will hurt him very much. You're lying. No. I won't let you. There is only one way you can stop me, and that's by giving him up. While you're at it, you can prove just how adult and mature your love is. It's a perfect course of action on every front, Kim. Spare him your mother's rage by giving him up. Now, come on. Tell me this is the last time you'll see him. What promises do you mean? I can't take you to Bermuda. Well, of course not, till Tizo's better. And I'd still like to send you on your own. Absolutely not. I'll wait for you. What else? Well, some of the plans that we tossed around, not plans, uh, really, but possibilities, ideas. Yeah? I may not have the same kind of leeway now, as far as where we live and so forth. Well, of course not, Joe. Things have to come to a standstill temporarily. Yes, the next few days or few weeks, you've got to concentrate on your uncle, making no apologies for it. Yeah. Well, what I was wondering, Joe, is if... if you'll be taking over some of your uncle's responsibilities. I, temporarily. Like at the harbor side. Uh, Tizo has asked me to, yes. Uh, ordinarily, George would take over, but... Um, hey, sure. Is... I mean, you know the ropes. You could do it blindfolded. It means I'll have to be a little more available. Can I help? The best way you can help is by taking care of yourself and the baby. Well, I'd like to do something at the harbor side, order food, who knows? I mean, I could be a little closer to home. Siobhan, your home is here now until everything's settled. You can't go anywhere near Sheepshead Bay. Well, I hope you're planning to move in here, too. I mean, it's a little tight for space, but we can always make room. And it's peaceful enough. Little John is either at school or at play. And she, uh, Delia's never around. She's so busy with the restaurant. Won't you do that? Well, thanks for the offer, but I can't, Maeve. How is Delia? She was the first person that Tizo asked about. Oh, well, she carried on a bit last night, but she's basically all right. That's good. Why can't you move in? I want you to. Well, my business is in Brooklyn. My boats, plus whatever I have to do for Tizo. But your wife's in Manhattan. Tizo's in the hospital just across the street. Listen, sweetheart. Trouble may follow me. I don't want to risk that. I'd better get going. Lots of business to take care of, but I'll call you. What business? The usual. You'll be at the hospital, though? I may drive out to uh, Sheepshead Bay, check things out there. Be nice to get a change of clothes. I love you. Be good. Yeah, you too. Thanks for everything. Take care, Joseph. Yeah. Um, I may need to call you at the hospital. Uh, would you please not send a message through the nurse, but talk to me? Yeah, I will. Oh. 
If I'm in trouble out at Cheapside Bay, what about him? Well, he may stay with Tiso. I mean, that bond goes very deep. That's obvious. How deep is the question? I'm sorry, sweetheart, but that's exactly what I mean. If Joe is Tiso's heir, if, if he's the one Tiso has in line to take over, we may know that very soon. <laughs> Brooke's gangster grandpa has left her the family business. Now, can this future fashionista give the mob a makeover? Megan Fox, Dominic Kianese, and Kelly Cuoco star in the Sunday night movie, Crimes of Fashion, Sunday night at 8 on SoapNet.